Zamri Osman. Uh, I'm attached at the Department of Accounting, IUM, Kuliah Economic of Management Sciences. Basically, my area of interest is um, on the uh, accounting from Islamic perspective. Uh, zakat counting, waqf, baitul mal. Basically, the accounting for non-Islamic banking. And then my research and also my engagement with uh, outside parties also with the similar area. Although I did teach auditing as well as the accounting, general accounting papers. So the term auditing itself, when it is come to the, uh, the, the, the area, the ambit of, of, of discussion here, uh, tidak mudah. Yeah. Tidak mudah in this case, although you have the term hezbah, uh, which is closely related to that. But if you look into, let's see, it is very much part of the accounting. If you look into uh, the history in Islam, then uh, you have the term katib, tukang tulis lah, basically, okay, penulis, kitab tu, katib, tulis. Part of the work of the katib, katib, asal-asalnya katib, kemudian bila Islam telah berkembang sedikit, berkembang di zaman uh, khalifah dan juga sahabat selepas tu, you have uh, uh, katibul mal, mal harta ya. So, katib yang general, kemudian ada sebelah bawah dia katibul mal. And one of the function of the katibul mal is, uh, dia ada, kalau tengok, uh, if you look into the Al-Mawardi uh, books, uh, Al-Hakam tu, the katibul mal have six function. One of the function is, okay, dia kena buat kerja auditing. So, it is at the early, at the later part, ada pula officer yang lain betul di bekerja di bawah Katibul Mal, where they work as an auditors. So, one of the function is Katibul Mal. The term that they use is Muhasibatil Ommal. Muhasibat, hisab lah. The root word Muhasibatil Ommal ni, pekerja, amil lah. Pekerja, okay. So, auditor yang mengaudit pekerja. So, that is the job scope of the of the uh, katibul mal tadi lah kalau kita nak biasa katib ni agaknya accountant lah even the word accountant but it's not there okay. so I think that's the function the concept although we can go back kalau kita nak tengok Quran segi pun yang biasa disebutkan oleh Muslim scholars Muslim accounting scholars when they talk about Islam uh, we talk about audit uh, Al-Baqarah tu Ya ayuhal ladhina amanu idha tadayuntum bidainin ila ajalan musamma faktubuh Faktubuh kitab, kutub okay? Maka tulislah Itu most of the accounting scholars, Muslim accounting scholars Says that that is about accounting Right? So I've already talked about that in relation to the audit just now But if you go further That ayah You are, you are talking about the fastashidu shahidain Itu ambil saksi Okay? So, if we would like to interpret ambil saksi, itu adalah audit. So, because we talk about interesting, that ayah, of course. Quran is always interesting. All right? okay. Interesting about the ayah, though, you talk about uh, dua saksi. That is interesting. Why dua saksi? Uh, this is my interpretation. Nanti orang kata saya sesat pula, kan? Okay. Our own interpretation, kan? Dua saksi. If you look into now, all right? You have audit wise, internal, external. Okay. We can, if you would like to interpret, that's the way. And then they talk about, kalau tidak kuat, talk about laki dan perempuan di situ, syahidah ini uh, saksi laki, saksi perempuan, dia kena ada dua. So maksudnya kalau kita saksi itu quote unquote tidak, indip, tidak independent, so therefore kena ada dua. Meaning in this case, you may have external audit <laughs> proper, but kalau nak internal audit, mungkin kena dua internal audit. Oh, that's the idea, the, the meaning of that. So, kita tak tahu mungkin governance ke, mungkin compliance ke, mungkin review committee ke, that sort of thing, right? So, that's the idea if you would like to interpret, so which is interesting. So, that's back to the Quran. Right, okay. Sounds interesting. <laughs> 
tapi bimbang juga reinterpretation of oh, kan orang kata pula kita ya bukan bukan ya in that areas kan and then yes Alright, okay. Um, I think, well, uh, as we mentioned, that uh, you have the institution of uh, ombudsman, which is uh, Hezbah in this case. Uh, but then, at that point of time, you have, oh my goodness, I, may I quote uh, papers on the, Omar Zaid, which talk about the, he quote the books uh, by uh, Al Kalkashandi, which talk about the the audits. Yes, uh, basically, the existence of audit, if we if we like to say this as audit, they talk about, they translate into review. It is of course Arabic books, and translation is review. If you talk about that, uh, the audit is there not because people are trying to cheat, or people are trying to deceive. The audit is there, the ideas, the nature of audit is people make mistakes. Well, that's the whole different paradigm, different paradigm altogether. Eh? The existence of audit at that point of time, not because try people, they have these ideas of cheating, but rather because human, from the word insan, pelupa, okay, manusia pelupa. So you may make mistake. Your eyes probably is not different from different second people there. That's the ideas of, of, of audit at that point of time. Sebelum Tahun seribu lah. Uh, I mean, think it's not, it's not, it's not very, early, it's not very early. It's probably after Sahaba, oh, okay. right? so after Sahaba during Abbasiyah, during Umayyad in this case. So you have that ideas. Uh, that's why tidak um, buat audit bukan sebab <laughs> oh, <okay. laughs> yeah, trying to find faults. Yeah. That's that's what interesting the existence of that of of of. Of that, so therefore you have hisba, mm -hmm. you have audit, which is not the idea not to catch people are make, make, making mistake. So you have kind of separation as well. In this case, you have a governance. Of course, the governance is it's, it's different in the sense that people are afraid of the higher power over there. Mm -hmm. Okay, so which is different. Uh, but then even that, they still have this. Sharia audit, so to speak. We talk about there is no mention of the Sharia, of course, because yes, the counting at that point of time mostly it is a state accounting rather than business. It is the government itself. So although some scholars try to extrapolate the accounting in the state accounting to a business because of the zakat issues, mm -hmm. but then there is no clear evidence as yet to say that that's such a case. So, bila kita bercakap pasal accounting dalam sejarah Islam, therefore, it is almost always referred to a state, state. government, isn't it? rather than that. So, we talk about state, the, gov the governance is that banyak dalam history lah. The Madina, uh, the issues of uh, the, the establishment of Madina as a state. So, therefore, governance is already there. So, dia bukan yang berbeza sangat uh, dengan, 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 dengan corporate Corporate, corporate entities in this case. Okay, so governance is there, but kita tidak bercakap in the sense of Islamic banking governance, Sharia governance as such, because it is an is <laughs> Islamic, Islamic government already, Islamic state already. So therefore, tak ada isu sangat lah on that. Okay, but as I said, you have institute isbah also to look into that, but then also you have this quote unquote uh, audit under the katib just now lah. And then, how do we say that accounting is Islamic in this case? So, um, one of some some would say that okay, we should have different treatment. Some says that uh, not. Some says we propose the ideas that oh, it is not double entry, it is triple entry, which is Ijiri's papers, right? So, but then oh, is is this Islam then? So I think it is either you go on the technicalities, but then the more importantly is you go on the human side, mm -hmm. treating the human. I think that would be a difficult part, but then to say whether uh, it is Islamic or not, then probably you need to rely on the accountant rather than the accounting. Accounting, we talk about the selected sharia, 
contract where how do we treat i think that's not too difficult that the the one we are engaging now how do we treat for example uh, zakat money issues of capitalizing or expensing for example of the zakat authority purchasing house for the purpose of asnaf in this case from do we expense off the whole let's say kalau beli bangunan besar 1 million well, that is really quote and quote accounting was really clear you need to recognize the set and then amortize for several year but then the one they are doing is expense off which is quite uh, so that that is technicalities we have perhaps some way on addressing that okay that is if we say that islamic accounting how do i say that but then the human side and the human accountant that would be a much more difficult thing to do but then i think that's we need <laughs> you were saying just now regarding where is the islamic input that's where we start from the beginning the the issues of oh, this is philosophical which is the will view sides mm -hmm. how do we learn how do we learn uh, accounting and then how do we whether we would like to integrate whether we would like to embed whether it is there within the subject itself it is not a separate accounting islamic accounting it is accounting then islam is inside that the whole uh, financial accounting and reporting one two three four is there in the islam is there mm -hmm. rather than islamic accounting separate subject okay so which is imbued in the islamic worldview then in this case mm -hmm. so nak ajar tu kena manusialah accountant rather than the accounting technologies yeah.